Hey, I'm Hans Hess. Thanks for watching my television program. Such a blessing, such an honor to come to you and preach the Word of God. I have a fire in my heart to win as many people to Jesus as I can before I leave here. I feel like the house is on fire and I'm trying to rescue folks out of the fire. So thanks for watching today. We're going to get into the scripture and I want you to open up your mind and open up your heart. Take just a few minutes and listen to what I have to say and allow God to speak to you today. Believe God. Elevate your faith today as you listen and believe God for great things. Open your Bibles with me to Mark chapter 4, actually. And let's look at verse 35. The Bible says, On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him, and a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the storm, or sorry, in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea. Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful, and how is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Don't you love that story? That's a classic story from the Bible, and I love it. Amen? So I'm going to talk about developing a spiritual mindset realizing that we are spiritual beings. And I, this sounds like uh, kindergarten 101 Christianity, and I hope it is. But we need reminded of it, and that is that we are spiritual beings as well as physical beings. We live in a physical body, and we spend, it seems like, 99% of our time concerned about this thing, right? This earth suit we're in. But I want to remind you that you're really a spiritual person who lives in a body. You, you are a spiritual person who lives in a body. And this body's going to go away one day. But that spiritual man's going to live on. You're going to live on forever somewhere. And so if we wanted to give, you know, if we wanted to look at our lives, not that it, it's important to take care of the body. Absolutely, it's Bible to take care of the body. But if you want to look at it in terms of eternity, you know, emphasis should be on the spiritual. Because we're going to live forever. Amen? And so we have this golden opportunity now to develop the spiritual man in us, to develop the spiritual part of us. And so in this new year, 2023, I want you to start developing the spiritual part of your life. Maybe you haven't, get, maybe just attend church, that's all you do, or, or maybe you listen to a little bit of preaching here or there, or read a little bit of scripture here or there. I, just, I want you to, I want to encourage you this year to get into the Bible to pray on a regular basis, to have a devotional time with the Lord, and really focus on developing the spiritual man or woman that you are. Is that all right? Spend time developing the spiritual man or woman that you are. Hallelujah. And you know, your devotional time with the Lord, you know, I'm a Pentecostal, so when I pray in public, it's like fighting bees. It's like we get in and pray with everything in us and shout with everything in us. But sometimes if you were with me in my quiet time when I'm alone with the Lord, I'm talking to him just like my best friend. And I'm just talking to the Lord. Or sometimes um, I'm just listening for him. Because, you know, as one man said years ago, we have two ears and one mouth. We should listen twice as much as we should talk. And I think it's the same in the spirit realm. We listen to God and we should spend more time listening to him. You know, the ancient monks practice what's called Lexio Divina, which is divine reading. 
and it involved several things. One was lexio, to read the scriptures slowly and only a portion of it, maybe one verse of it. And then meditatio, which is to meditate on it, to think about it, to ruminate on it. And then oratio, to live it, to pray it, to take that scripture and pray it. Some of you were with us in a training last Saturday where we were in Prince George uh, training on what we call the Arise in Prayer initiative, which is taking scripture and praying scripture. And we've been doing that with a group of intercessors here at the church, and we're going to increasingly open it up to more and more of the church as we go. But we, don't, we wanted to take our time and go slowly and build these prayer meetings with just a small group of intercessors who could get the taste of just praying Scripture because we're taking about 80% of our time in just praying Scripture. And then the last 20%, we make our request known. Because sometimes when we come to God, we spend 100% of our time just making requests known. God, give me this and give me this and touch this person, touch this person. Thank you. See you later. And we don't take enough time to soak in his word and really pray the scripture back to him or, or meditate on what he's saying to us. Because when we really want, want to walk in faith, we sometimes need to sit down and spend some time with the Lord and see what he's saying. How are you telling me to pray about this situation? Or what are you telling me to do about this situation? Okay, we'll talk about all these things today. So Jesus tells his disciples, let us go to the other side. That's the word of the Lord. Let us go to the other side. So he hops in the boat and goes to sleep because he knows they're going to the other side. But then they get in the boat and a great wind kicks up, and the disciples all start flipping out. And then they go awake Jesus, awaken Jesus, or wake him up, whatever's the correct English. <laughs> they wake him up, and he just speaks a word, and everything is calmed, and then turns around and rebukes them. This is what blows me away, is that he rebukes them for their fearfulness and lack of faith. Now, I don't know about you, but if I, it seemed if I was in a storm, for, afraid for my life, I'd be waking the master up too. Amen? Because that separates the men from the boys. I've been on a few flights where the turbulence got so bad. You know, I was in a little uh, puddle jumper airplane one time going from Puerto Rico to St. Lucia uh, in the Caribbean to preach the gospel. And that plane dropped just like, shoom. and everybody started praying. And everybody started getting their lives right. Amen? And, you know, we're all calling on the master, wake the master up. So I would think that's the norm. But why does Jesus get out on the other side and rebuke them and chastise them for this? For something that seemed like a normal reaction. And this is the only conclusion I have. If you Bible scholars have a better one, let me know later. But this is all I can think of is that they shouldn't have doubted and they shouldn't have been afraid because if Jesus says we're going to the other side, brother or sister, we're going to the other side. We'll preach it to this church over here. If Jesus says we're going to the other side, we're not going to die in the midst of this thing. We're going to the other side. So Jesus knew that, so he laid down and took a nap. And whatever caused the storm, some believe just the natural storm that kicked up, or maybe it was satanic. You say, can the devil cause a storm? I think so. But whatever the case, it was impeding their progress to the other side. Jesus got up, peace be still. What's wrong with you guys? I told you it was going to be all right. Look at your neighbor and say, what's wrong with you? I told you it was going to be okay. If the Lord has spoken it, okay, so here's the lesson. The Bible says that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So no matter what comes, no matter what winds blow, no matter how loud the devil barks, no matter how many circumstances you have to walk through, if Jesus says we're making it to the other side, we are going to make it to the other side. 
Hallelujah. If he says that my strength is made perfect in weakness and I've got you by my hand and hallelujah, I'm going to uphold you and you shall tread upon serpents and scorpions and nothing by any means shall harm you and I've got you in my arms and I'm taking you to the other side and I'm bringing you into your perfect destiny, then brother or sister, I don't care what the neighbors are saying. I don't care what the family's saying. I don't care what the news is saying. I don't care what the stock market's saying. I don't care what CNN is saying. I don't even care what Fox News is saying. I'm going to make it because I'm trusting in Jesus, not in the winds of change and the terms of circumstances. I'm trusting in the Lord. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together and give him a shout hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, look at your neighbor. I know people make fun of this, but I don't care. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to trust in the Lord. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So I want to give you four things that I want you to do. First of all, look at me, or look with me, <laughs> the book of Joshua, chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. You think about it. In Joshua chapter 1, Joshua is taking over the reins of the leadership of Israel from Moses. You think that would be intimidating? You're following Moses. I mean, he's the man, right? Almost every chapter in some portions of the Pentateuch, it's, and the Lord spoke to Moses. And the Lord, I mean, he's hearing from God. He's been on the mountain with God. God said, I talk to other men in different ways, but with Moses, I speak face to face. He goes up on the mountain, comes down, and he's shining so bright, he has to have a veil to cover his glory. He's the one God gave the, the, the Ten Commandments to. He's the one that God said, just stretch out your, your staff. And what happened? All the ten plagues of Egypt. He's the man. He's the man. He's meek. He walks in authority. He's, the, he's a miracle worker. He's hearing from God. He's a prophet. He's the man. And now he's died, and you get to fill his shoes. And so here's Joshua filling his shoes, and the Lord gives him this. Look at verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. For this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and of good courage that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left hand that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it for then, everybody say then. Yes. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. What was the condition of his good success? To meditate on the word. Everybody say it with me. Meditate on the word. The condition of his success was that he would meditate in the law of God day and night. Meditation Meditation originally belongs to the people of God. We think it's just an Eastern religious thing, but it belongs to the people of God. The Hebrew term for meditate is Hagah, and it means to ruminate. It means to speak to yourself. The difference in Eastern meditation and biblical meditation is Eastern meditation is about clearing your mind, whereas biblical meditation is about filling your mind with the thoughts of God. We're not just clearing our minds so anything has access to us. We're filling our minds with the Word of God so that we start to think the Word, breathe the Word, live the Word, act out on the Word. Because he knew that Joshua was going to encounter unbelievable circumstances. He was going to encounter rebellious people. He was going to encounter forces that he maybe wouldn't know what to do with. He was going to go to a land he had never been to before. He'd only lived in Egypt and in the wilderness his whole life. And now God's bringing him out and bringing him into a new land. And he knew that his success would not be if he looked to the other nations and said, I'm going to do it like they've done it. That's what Israel did eventually. Or I'm going to try to be a king like the other kings of the pagan nations. Or I'm going to worship the other gods of the other nations. Or I'm going to try a warfare strategy like other kings that I've admired. No, God said, forget all that stuff. Just get into my word. 
and let this law be marinating in you day and night. The term can be translated ruminate, and ruminate is like a cow chewing cud. You know, a cow chews, eats grass for a while, and then he saves a little bit back. So he can bring it up later and chew on it a little bit more. It's like I'm going to swallow the word, I'm going to bring it back later, and I'm going to think on it again. I'm going to swallow more word, I'm going to bring it back, and I'm going to think on it again. So much so that it trains our minds how we should act and how we should think. It trains our minds how we should act and how we should think. And then we can say, no, that's not the way we're doing. You know, uh, maybe, maybe some of y'all heard this testimony, but let's go back two and a half years ago or a little more. Uh, my son-in-law Axel and my daughter Alex, they were expecting uh, their firstborn child. His name, was Ma- his name is Maverick. And so Maverick was, um, Alex went to have the test done about Maverick, and, and they said, listen, this is not looking good. This baby is only at four percentile in growth, and there's a growth restriction happening. And we didn't know how serious it was at the time. Come to find out, it's a real serious deal. There's a uterine restriction. There's a growth restriction to the baby. And so uh, they send her to some uh, other doctors, and one doctor looks at her and says, you better be making some decisions while you still have time. And we know what that means. You better seriously think about aborting this baby. And so I was preaching a uh, pastor's conference in Tennessee, and she calls, and Alex is absolutely frantic. Cannot be consoled. She's like just a, a wreck. And I said, well, Alex, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. I, I don't have the answers, but I know one thing. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Next morning, I went down to those pastors, 300 in that room. And uh, Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And I walked into this, this hotel conference center, and I said, could y'all help me pray today? I have an unspoken request. It's just for my daughter is all I'm going to say. And we began to pray. And those, those people prayed, man. They prayed passionately. They prayed fervently. And we stood on the Word. We stood on the Word. 24 hours later, she calls us, and she says, Dad, he's grown to 14%. He's grown, is that not true, Axel? He's grown to 14%, and she said, I've got the documentation on my phone. Well, he came out, and, you know, it was during the heart of COVID, and it was end of June, and uh, he, we couldn't go see them in the hospital, so they FaceTimed us, and Alex was there crying, and she said she cried all night long and held him. And he was perfect. And he was perfect. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah or I'm going to shout for you. Hallelujah. (laughs) Come on, say, my God knows what he's doing. My God, I'm going to stand on the word. Hallelujah. I'm going to stand on the word. I'm going to stand on the word. I'm going to meditate in the word. I'm going to stand on the word. I'm going to choose the word above all else. Come on, somebody put your hands together and give him a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to stand on the Word. James chapter 1, verse 2, verse 22. But don't just listen to God's Word. You must do what it says. This is the NLT version of be ye not only hearers of the Word, but be ye doers. Listen to it in the NLT. But don't just listen to God's Word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. So we can read all day long, but we at some point have to put it into action because faith requires action. Faith can't just reside in the brain. The heart has to get involved. And when we put faith into action, wow, do we ever see God start moving and doing some amazing things. Because God's waiting on us to step into the arena and to step into faith and say, okay, Lord, I believe you. Now I'm going to step out. I'm going to jump off this diving board of faith, and I know you've got me when I step out. Or either we might as well go home, or we just call this a social club. 
pay your dues and we'll have nice dinners and events. No, this isn't just a social club. This is the church of the living God. This is birthed by his spirit purchased with his blood. We're in a different deal here. We're in the kingdom of heaven now. We're in a different system of doing things. We're in a different way of doing things. God's ways are higher than our ways. And if he says do this, we better act on it and do what he says. And then we unlock all of the blessings and all of the overflow and all of the power that he has in our lives. I want to challenge you in 2020. 23. Step out and trust what God has said in his word. Step out and do what he says in his word and leave the results up to him. The results are God's. Years ago, great evangelist R.W. Schambach said that he, uh, he said there was a, 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 a person they wanted to pray for who had deceased. And he said, first thing the devil said is what if they don't get up? He said, I thought, thought back, well, devil, what if he does get up? <laughs> I heard years ago a great African bishop, Vincent Itahosa from Nigeria, preach in person. And he talked about eight people that he had raised from the dead. And he said, what about all the other people that you've prayed for that didn't come back from the dead? He said, I don't talk about those. I talk about those eight that were raised from the dead. We get so skeptical and hung up on, on things that didn't happen that you allow that to destroy the Word of God and take its effect out of your life. You've made the Word of God of none effect through your vain traditions, Jesus told the uh, Pharisees. I don't want to be like that. I'm a believer. I live on the believing side. If coincidences happen in my life, I chalk them up to Jesus unless I can prove it otherwise. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I don't think doors just open without any kind of spiritual forces at work. I don't think attacks come at me just because there's just natural things that I need to consider. I always consider there's a spirit man that I am and there's a spirit world that I live in. There's malevolent spiritual forces coming against me and God is always for me. His angels are around me. His Holy Spirit lives within me and overflows out of my life. You're not just a physical person. You're a spiritual person. Therefore, you need the right spiritual food. Food. If you told me I have a New Year's resolution, I'm going to get ripped six pack, bulging arms, lean, and I say, Well, what are you doing? I'm eating those king dongs like nobody's business. I got biscuits and gravy every morning, and I get me a couple cases of Pepsi, and I work through in a week. You're not going to make it, my brother. <laughs> it's the same thing in the spirit realm. Oh, I got a goal this year, Pastor Hans. I want to be a dynamic, praying, spirit-filled person. What are you doing? Binging Netflix. I just couldn't get away from it. Are you spending any time in prayer? Well, no, but uh, over our food. We do pray every day over our food. Are you listening to any word? Well, no, but uh, I have a memory scripture on my refrigerator. Come on, I'm just playing with y'all now. Take, don't get so serious on me, all right? You, you get me? You follow my drift here? If you want to develop spiritually, get a plan to develop spiritually. Get some discipline. Learn discipline, my son, the book of Proverbs. Get some discipline in it. Say, I'm going to get into the Word. And I've noticed John Wesley's adage is still true. The more I pray, the more I want to pray. The more I read His Word, the more I want His Word. Amen? The more I get in His Word, the less I want to hear the chatter of the world. The more I walk in faith, the less I want to hear contradictory voices in my living room telling me something other than that. Some of us have Holy Ghost meetings and then go home. I'm getting down into the, I'm meddling right now. Is that all right? Can I meddle on? We want Holy Ghost meetings and pastor better preach today. And that worship team better be on point because I need some Jesus. And then we go home and turn on F word, F word, F word, F word. Atheist, 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 atheist philosophy. Come on now. 
Come on, get it out of your life. Get it out. Get it out. Time, come on, we're in a time you can't play around. We don't, you don't need to play around anymore. Get in the Word. Get in the Word. Get in the Word. Well, I'm bored with the Word. Well, you're in a sorry shape then. If Jesus ain't good enough for you, as my friend Kent Christmas says, I don't know how I can, what I can do for you. If Jesus gets boring to you, I don't know. You need, you need to get a hold of God, and you need to get down and repent and cleanse yourself and allow the Holy Ghost to come and shake you out of your lethargy. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, shout it. I want the Word. Meditate in it and act upon it. Next thing you need to do is you need to put the word first. You need to put the word first. Notice in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 4. I love this. Proverbs 4 verse 20. The Bible says, My son, give attention to my word. Incline your ears to my sayings and do not let them depart from your eyes. Now, now we could say, you know, yeah, but if you're hermeneutically looking at this, this is the words of the Proverbs writer. No, it's, but I'm saying it's the word of God. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Take my word and give attention to it. Put my word first. Our problem sometimes is we put the word last. I'll try this method and this philosophy and this opinion and this thing. Well, I guess we need to pray now. It's interesting. I have a friend who's a, who's a great dynamic pastor, and he says um, he was he, someone in his family, I think it was, who was struggling with a major disease. And um, he said he was encouraging them to trust God. And they kind of came back at him. No, we know what we're doing, and we're doing it this way. And then when all else failed, they said, could you pray for us? And he said, okay, okay, let me understand this. I'm the last resort. We're going to put the word in last place. Praise God. Thank you for listening today. And thank you for opening up your heart to hear the word of God. Listen, I want to pray for you quickly before we go off the air here. If you have any needs in your life or if you've never accepted Christ into your heart, I really want to see you make it to heaven. I want to see you finish this race well. Amen. God has provided the greatest gift of all history. That is, he gave us his son that who would die for us so that we wouldn't have to face eternity without God. So if you've never accepted Christ into your heart, let's start there today. Then I'm going to pray for healing and other needs in your life. So just pray this with me. Father, I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. Forgive me of all sin and become the Lord of my life, Lord Jesus. In your name I pray. Now I'm going to pray for your needs. Father, in the name of Jesus, for those who are struggling in their bodies, struggling in their minds, Lord, I pray that you minister to them right now. I pray that you touch them by the power of your Holy Spirit. We bind every demonic influence in their life that's attacking them and we cast it out and we just declare the glory of God and victory of God in their hearts right now in the name of Jesus. Be set free by the power of God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for watching us. Go in victory and give God the praise. It's gonna come. Look straight ahead, my face towards the sun. We will